that almost 30 years ago when I sat, I'm not exactly right here, but in the same spot that you were in at this point in your life. Um, I had a very successful high school career. Um, I was an athlete that people knew my name. They had watched me tear up the soccer field, the basketball court, the softball field for four years uh, at a high level. Um, they, I was a valedictorian at the same time. So between sports and, I mean, I, I'm not someone you look at and go, oh yeah, that's a basketball player. Um, she's tall. I mean, Connor and I would stand by each other and if you were to pick, you would think Connor was a basketball player because you're what, 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah, I'm 5'2 on a good day. Um, <laughs> but that's what I was known for. It was Shauna Wynn. I, I'm married, obviously, now, and uh, my name is, has changed, but Shauna Wynn, you hear that in Grants Pass, at Grants Pass High School, and you're like, oh yeah, that's that athlete. That's that person that has you know, all these awards and all these accomplishments in sports. Um, and I mean, think about that for you guys right now. Who, who are those people that you know their name because of what they've done on the sports field? And that, that was me. So I'm leaving high school, did well in all my classes, did great in sports as well. Everyone knows my name. Um, I do remember though, uh, a hard part, one of the hard things that I faced um, in high school was my dream was to go play basketball. I wanted to go to the next level, play at the college level. And then even at that, at that time, the WNBA was just starting. So, okay, well, people are like, oh, are you gonna dream of going to that next level and becoming a professional basketball player? You know, my first step was to think of that next step, which was college. And um, I've been receiving communication from multiple different colleges for sports. And the one that I wanted to play was basketball. And the University of Oregon had been recruiting me. And then at the start of my senior year, it stopped. They no longer were communicating with me. They no longer were reaching out and saying, hey, you think you should come be a duck? Um, and so I was like, I don't know what's going on. I was kind of thinking that was the route that I was going to go. And so the athletic director at the time uh, knew the Oregon people. He had been, a, he had played football at Oregon. And so he reached out to them. And so then he called me into his office. He's like, hey, Sean. Um, so, They've decided not to recruit you anymore because you're too short. They've decided that you're too short. And what do you, what do you think my reaction was at that time? You would think heartbreak. I was crushed. But for whatever reason, at that point, I had this piece of, it's my height. That's nothing that I have had any control over is how tall I am. That's how I am. That's just what, how I was made, okay, I have peace with that. Yeah, I can work my butt off on the court, I can be the hardest working, smartest playing person out there, but at the end of the day, I can't control how tall. And that was what made them decide not to recruit me anymore. And I walked away from that day going, why? Why did I have that piece? Why was I okay with being rejected from the school that I thought that that was the path that I was supposed to take? And it was something that, I was pretty sure I knew the answer to that, but it was something I wanted to contemplate. And so I went off to play college at a different school, Seattle Pacific University, uh, like what Dom said, and um, enjoyed three years, not four years of basketball, because by the end, I had realized, in my second year, I was like, okay, how can I contribute to this team? You're good, we made the top eight in the nation. Um, but I know my role isn't what it was in high school where I'm getting all these awards and accomplishing crazy things, but I'm still a contributor to this team. What can I do to be the best version of me? And so that year I learned, okay, our point guard, she needs her shoulders rubbed so she will be relaxed when she gets out on the court. So every, before every game I do 10 seconds, you got this, massage your shoulders. Another player I knew that I needed to tell her, hey, focus, you got this. Another one I knew I had to get her to laugh. Another one sang the national anthem before most of the game, so I go warm up singing with her, but then I never sang with her. But I learned what each person needed and encouraged them in their role. And that year I learned one of my favorite awards I ever received, and that was most inspirational. 
on a team where we were top eight in the nation. It was it was it was more I don't know, it was it was more special to me in a lot of ways than most valuable player awards that I received throughout high school and stuff because I had learned how to pivot in a way that was beneficial not just for me but for those on my team around me. And so um, I played one more year of basketball and, and I was married that year. Uh, before the season started, and I'm um, still married to Eli. It's been over 25 years, and uh, I had to make a choice that year after that first year of playing basketball, married, and I knew my senior year I was going to be student teaching and being an athlete and being married, and that was too much on my plate. So for the first time in my life, I said no to sports. I said yes to my family and to the career that I knew I was going to have down the road. And so um, I learned that it was okay to pivot like that and move to something else, and I don't regret it one bit. Um, and that's something that you're going to have to face decisions like throughout the decisions like throughout your life of will, will this decision be something that I regret or not? And I'm, just, I'm hopeful that you'll see that whether it's because you're too short or whether it's because your dream is changing because your priorities have changed, it's okay to make that change. And so, um, now looking back on who I was then compared to now, I am different even now than what I was then. I feel like um, there's a lot of changes and growth that I've had. The ministries or the things that I value now are way different than I ever thought I would value in my life or be a part of. And, um, I mean, it's like I hardly do sports anymore. Um, I mean, I'll go mix it up on the pickleball court. Or um, the other day I was in a meeting at the district office and I wanted a break, so I went out and shot hoops with no one else around. Yes. But don't ask me to run down up, up and down the court and try to jump because that's not happening. Yoga in the morning is my favorite exercise anymore because if I don't move like that in the morning, I'm sore the rest of the day. So priorities and things change, and I'm not coaching things and pouring into athletes like I thought I probably was going to be doing from your age. I love coaching. I love getting in there and mixing it up and encouraging kids to give it their best effort out on the court. Be something that you can be proud of. Give it your best effort. Um, be a part of a team, something bigger than yourself. Um, but with my job now in the Career Development Center, um, I get to not. I get to have conversations with over 1,600 kids if I want, um, and it gets to be about those analogies of life that you would be having in sports, except it's just life. And I've realized how important those connections are, and how how much each of you need someone to just kind of be your school mom, or be someone that's going to say things or challenge you in ways that you wouldn't get otherwise. I mean, I know I've had some conversations with some of you that have been awkward and challenging and hard, and that's okay. I'm hopeful that you will learn from those now. And it's, it's something about um, my job that I love. And, um, but what's weird though is, I, I mean, I can look, and I know, I know some of your names. I, and some of you, I know your names, but I'll never pronounce them right. I'll, I mean, I'll say it wrong every time I get like scholarship and I don't attempt to say correctly at all. Anyway, um, that's going to happen. And then there's other of you that I can look at and go, I don't know if I recognize your faces. All of you guys here, I don't think I recognize your faces and those three names because you guys are awesome. And that one matters. But does that matter if I'm here? Does it matter if me, as the person here at the high school that's worked with young years, doesn't know your name? Am I who you're getting your definition of who you are from? Why? Why not? I just never thought about it. Who are you pouring into? When was the last time you told someone to their face something deep? There was something you noticed about them. Something that is special to you about that person. Those are the things that I go back and think of and study and remember. I remember one friend who was, who went on to be very successful, owns a huge business, is a millionaire, he was a, he went to Stanford. 
he told me that I did something I don't even remember. I, I he, someone had called me fat. I'm like, he's not fat. I'm like, okay. That was something that changed his life because he was considering suicide. And by me just saying that, having somebody that said something, he's not fat. It just seemed obvious to me that I spoke it. It made a difference for him. So who is someone that you? When was the last time you said something special? Let someone know they're special. Okay. So I'm going to challenge you right now. Are you sitting next to someone that you can tell them something like this? If so, do it right now. Go ahead. Right now. 30 seconds. Someone next to you. You parents up there, go for it too. <laughs> verses that I want to share with you to maybe give you hope or at least 
made you curious include Isaiah 40, 20 to 31. Is that any of your guys' favorites that you're going to share during your sharing time? You guys know that one? It's the one that my parents wrote in my Bible, and I went off out of high school. They gave me a Bible, and it was what was written in the front as the highlighted key one. But I'm going to read it in one thing I like about YouVersion is that all the different versions. I'm going to go, I've got it on ESV right now. I'm going to go to the contemporary English version. I don't know if it's because sometimes I feel like a little kid, but it's the version that a lot of times I like how it's worded because it's worded in a way that I can understand it. So Isaiah 40. Starting in verse 28. Don't you know, haven't you heard? The Lord is the eternal God, creator of the earth. He never gets weary or tired. His wisdom cannot be measured. This is the the key part here that I remember the most with being an athlete's father. The Lord gives strength to those who are weary. Even young people get tired and stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord... But those... But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will be strong like eagles soaring upon upward on wings. They will walk and run without getting tired. And that's just one verse of many that maybe will pluck at your heartstrings. Maybe will speak to you in a way that you needed to hear. Whether it was something that was hard for you to hear or easy for you to hear. It's full of that advice of things that you may read. And um, you know, I'm not, I'm not someone that that would say, oh yeah, I've got everything memorized in the book. I don't. But I know that it gives me the assurance that I can always go to it to find that strength, to find that hope, to find that direction as the answer to those questions that I may be contemplating. So maybe it's something that can help you with who you are. So to close, I just want you to know that you are loved, and you are chosen. You are not alone, and no matter what kind of challenges you face or people that seem to reject you, there is one that is welcoming you with open arms. You, just the way you are. And that is Jesus. Don't forget that. Blessings on you guys as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you.